Hey, Mascon, what's the burnishing butter? The white mud. <coughs> hold on a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is boring, and you know, I don't do boring. So, let's switch it up. Let's get it Mascon style. Let's make it exciting. Let's roll. All right, here's what we're gonna do. To keep this somewhat organized, I'll break some of the questions down into nine broad categories. Neither one of us has the time to go into every question and answer, so I've selected just a few for each category. I'll do more videos like this in the future, which means if you have other questions not covered in this session, write them down or type them in the comments below. If you like this format, we'll keep it going. And go. Is Mascon your first or last name? Neither. That's me right there. The Mascon name comes from my grandfather's construction company back in the 60s and 70s. And I explained all that in my last shop door video. How do you select, purchase, and care for your leather? Well, I purchased from the Tannery Row Maverick Leather, and it's always, whor well, not always, Horween mostly, care for. Uh, I don't do a whole lot of caring for. I do a whole lot of using. How do you determine the style of leather you want to go with for a specific design? Uh, I mostly use Horween Dublin for almost everything, and I, eventually I'll go into Chromexels and Derbies, and mostly Horween and mostly Dublin, and mostly five, six ounce. I've started to scale that back a little bit down to five ounce, but some designs call for veg tan, some call for colors. You're not going to get a lot of good color in Dublin. It's a natural veg tan itself, so there's no bright colors in Dublin. In some totes and bags, I'll go a little bit thinner so that it's a little bit more floppy, if you will. I guess my designs sort of speak to me and tell me, hey, this is what I want. And my customers tell me, hey, this is what I want. Where do you buy your leather? Uh, answered that one already. Right there. As far as patina over time, which leather or color shade do you prefer from the Horween Dublin line? Old English, English Tan, or Brown Nut? Actually, in order of darkness to lightness, it's English Tan Dublin, Old English Dublin, Brown Nut, Nut Brown, whichever. I forget. As far as if you want to see patina, the lighter you go when you start, the better the patina. I don't use these too often for my prototypes. I use them for orders all the time, so I don't have many examples, but I use this all the time. This is started out English tan, so did this, so did this. And you can see the patina here, less patina here, because this is on the outside. That's English tan. But you get into old English, you're gonna look something like this. Nut brown. This started off probably a little bit lighter, but that's going to be your nut brown. Boom. And remember, these are natural, so every single hide is different and they all react different over time. They start different, they end different, they just a totally different animal. Why Horween Dublin leather only? And what about Wicket and Craig, WNC? Um, it's not Horween Dublin leather only. I use a lot of different leathers and different Horween tannages. As far as Wicket and Craig, well, both are old, established, great, great companies. Horween uh, from 1905 or so, Wicket and Craig, 1867 or so, both great. I've just always used Horween. To switch over to Wicket and Craig or anything else isn't really that big of a deal because Horween is really, really perfect for me and I love it. If Horween quit making leather today, what tannage would you go with? Oh, geez, that's a great question. Of course, I'd love to give the aforementioned Wicket and Craig a shot if it came down to it. But speaking from actual usage experience, I'd go with Acadia leather, and thoroughbred leathers. They're both part of the Tasman family or group. Don't ask me full details on how all of that's set up. I, I don't get it. I've used both Acadia and thoroughbred and they're both wonderful. Really, really similar to Horween's Dublin, uh, as long as you get the right tannage. 
Do you apply any balms, waxes, or finishes prior to shipping? Me, prior to shipping? No. I do not apply anything at all prior to shipping. Because I use Horween Dublin and the tannery infuses so many fats and liquors, I don't really need it. I've never used it on any of my own products, but when people ask me, I do suggest Tanner's Blend from Ashland. And that's because they're part of the Horween Company in Chicago. If Have I ever tried anything? Sure, yeah, I've tried some stuff. If you ever get Neat's Foot Oil, don't get the compound. Get the 100% pure. This is not 100% pure. What ounce or thickness makes a wallet too thick or too thin? I'm the wrong person to ask, and that's way too subjective. It really depends. Me? That's six. I like five, six, leaning closer toward five. But ask 10 different people, and you're gonna get 10 different answers. It really, really is up to the person. Everyone is different. How do you go about coming up with a new wallet design? Do you look back through your past wallets and try to make them better? Oh, I can't seem to stop designing wallets and bags. But regarding wallets, look, essentially, and at a basic level, a wallet just needs to hold cash and cards. There are other variables, but for now, cash and cards. From a statistical and mathematical perspective, the design options are pretty much infinite. And I keep seeing all those options day and night. My intrigue just thirsts to see an idea in a physical 3D form not just a 2D sketch. So I make them as they come to mind. Where do you get your patterns from? Uh, I make all my own patterns. These are just wallets. I've never ever bought a pattern, but I love design almost as much as I love leather work. So I make them. Is it break time? Are we having fun yet or what? If you're having fun, subscribe, like all that jazz. When you're laying out a new wallet pattern, how do you plan out your stitching holes to make sure your card pocket edges land between holes? Is there a science to the madness? Yes, there's a science to the madness. And I'll show, uh, that's not gonna work. Uh, I'll show you right here. The easiest way is in the design. If you're doing five millimeter stitch holes, if you know that that one right there needs to fall over the edge. Well, then when you design that pocket right there, have that seam fall dead center between those two. And if you don't, let's say you didn't do that and you've already started your wallet, always make sure that goes there, that goes there, and then keep it five all the way till you get to the corner. And then instead of a five, you do a four. One millimeter, a couple stitches will make up some ground. What's the biggest bag you've done? It's probably, probably the King Arthur Duffel, this one. Two feet, uh, one foot, one foot. I got a pillow in here from a photo shoot. It's that one. How do you handle the business and tax side of MassCon leather? I've got a business degree and worked in accounting and banking for over 20 years. That helps a lot. The business side of a one-man operation can be its own video, long video, and a few books. You start something thinking, I'm going to spend my life creating this craft. But in reality, you end up spending more than 50% of your time, if not more, on administrative work. But I handle it with extreme efficiency. That is the key. For the tax side, my first piece of advice is to hire an accountant, a professional one, one with a really good sense of humor that helps. I could do and have done my own taxes, but being a numbers person, I look at it this way. If it takes me five days to gather all of my year end tax documents, prepare the returns, etc., etc., I equate that to time and money. Now I gather it all and just hand it off to my accountant. I go from five days lost to one day. My accountant is so good, he literally pays for himself along with the four days that I've saved. It's a win-win. My second piece of advice, just save all of your receipts like this. Your fun-loving accountant will thank you. In the end, just find a great accountant. 
What is your best-selling wallet design? Uh, that should be in the design section, but oh well, here we are. These four are the best-selling. Heller, Chunky Charlie, Tall Tennyson, and De Niro. Lily actually went through the books and counted them all, and I would say probably the Heller. Second would be the De Niro. Third, Tall Tennyson. Fourth, Chunky Charlie. How do you get all those models from all over the globe to do your t-shirt photos? Well, strap in folks. And yes, there's eye candy warning. Upcoming visuals are not safe for work. It all started with Alex Mucci in Italy. She asked for a shirt to model in some photo shoots. Uh, perfect. Here it comes. There you go. I sent it over to Italy. After she received the shirt, she reached out and asked if she could cut it up some, more like a crop top. And I said, sure, of course, have at it. Make it your own and have fun. It all snowballed from there. Keep in mind, as you can see from the vast quantity here, it's thousands of hours of work on my end and thousands of models, photographers, agents, management, and beyond. Contacting, asking, working out colors and sizing and then packing and sending and follow-ups and et cetera, et cetera. Honestly, it's a logistical nightmare for a one-man operation. And is it worth it? From a sales perspective, absolutely not. Not at all. Uh, but the whole effort didn't start to build and generate sales. It was and is about branding. And yes, branding is different than marketing. Again, that's a, another whole different video topic. That being said, that answers the how question as far as detailed logistics on the rest of the process. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want more on that and we'll see. Is it true that Chloe is indeed the best girl? 100% yes. What is some advice for marketing or getting your work seen? There are various facets to the overall answer to that question, but if I had to scale it down a lot, I'd point out two areas. And this is assuming you're not opening a brick and mortar store and not doing traveling craft fairs in person. Number one, presentation. 100% of what anyone will ever see of your work is 100% up to you. So photography. Spend more time on photography and presentation than you did on making leather goods. It matters that much. Number two, social media. Social media is the current and future traveling road show, if you will, all from the comfort of your underwear and your house. Your own website, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, TikTok, flood the internet with world-class photos and videos and learn to write captive captions and descriptions for every post. Do it all well, do it all often, do it all consistently. Create your own style and run with it. Oh, and have fun. What's with the $2 bills in your marketing photos and videos? What? Hey, hold on a second. Let's kill two birds with one stone. How much cash do you keep on hand in $2 bills? Looks like 23 bills times two is whatever the math is, 46? Do you have some tips for taking great photos of what you've made to really show it off? Man, I did not put these questions in order, but here we are again, let's go. Yes. Study, study, research, watch YouTubes over and over and over. Just research product photography on YouTube and watch it all. Also, I have a lot of props. I keep props. Staging photos, presentation, which we talked about. A bunch of gear, photo table to set up stuff, lights. And you don't need all the expensive stuff. Paper towels for diffusers, wax paper for diffusers, boxes from the post office from diffusers, cheap, cheap lights, these lights here, Amazon, some Gorilla Pods, some lenses. But the main thing is, is research and practice, practice. Olivia, more on her, anything on her? Ah, uh, Olivia. 
Remember our talk uh, about photography, staging, props, etc.? Well, Olivia came around one day to jump into a photo. She stuck around and demanded to be in more photos over the years. The audience sort of became attached to her being in pictures and began expecting more of her presence. She wanted to be included too, I think. Then she jumped into some videos, and that's her story. Oddly, she seems to motivate me by some sort of thick osmosis. She gives me this certain stare when I'm sitting back in the procrastination station. A deep, haunting glare. What grit drums are you running on your Dremel? Um, simple answer is 60 and 20. That's what you can get from Lowe's. I have tried many, many knockoff brands off Amazon. And let me explain why they are not the best. Dremel brand are half inch around and the knockoff brands are usually 13 millimeters, which half inch equals 12.7. So you're looking at 0.3 of a millimeter difference, but it makes them way too loose and they just fly off. I would go with Dremel brand. I'm gonna put a link down in the description for all this if I can remember it. Quick note, this thing here on the tip, this is the easy drum mandrel. This makes it so much easier switching back and forth. Two-part question. Do you happen to know any method of sharpening French style chisels? These are, not this one, these are French style. These are diamond tip. I don't use French ever. I only use diamond or an awl. We'll get to that in a second. And I've never sharpened those in my life. Do you happen to sharpen your arc punches? Note, these are arc punches. These are half round punches. Quick answer, no, I don't sharpen them. I strop them all the time. But I've never sharpened these and I've had these 10 years. What tool would you use if there were not chisels? An awl, a rounded hole punch chisel? First of all, no, I would never use a round punch chisel, ever. Uh, I was just taught early on, don't remove leather unless you have to, and a round hole removes leather, so it just, it, it perfectly fine, it will work, it just removes leather and it irks me, so no. But yes, the answer is an awl. I would use an awl. I would use my awl, the Barry King awl. This awl was gifted to me by Zach over at ZB, and it was the big bulbous round one that was a little bit too big for his hand. I got it and then I shaved it, sanded it down as you can see here. And now come to find out Barry King offers, or he always had and I didn't know about it, flat. I didn't know that. But anyway, he also has the blades as you can see here in inches. This is what you use if you don't have a chisel or tight spots. 78. No, 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 no. You probably already answered this already, but explain your lead times. We're getting deep now, folks. Explain them. I'm not sure if that's what is your current lead time or how do you determine them or I'll just start talking and see if the answer falls out. I guess in case some may not know what lead time means, that's the time between an order being taken and accepted until it's done and ready to be shipped out. I keep a calendar or the books with all of my orders. Every order goes on the docket in order as I accept them. I also plan out space and time that allow for doing leather, administrative work, packing and shipping, marketing, which is social media posts every day, YouTube production, and etc. Remember, one man operation. One thing I get often is if a spot opens up, can you squeeze me in? It doesn't really work that way. During any given time on the docket, I can be one or two weeks ahead or one or two weeks behind. If I'm ahead of schedule by a week or so, that allows me to squeeze in all the other business tasks as mentioned earlier. I won't squeeze in a leather order. If I'm behind schedule, that's when you see a small lag in uh, the marketing presence like social media posts and video production. Essentially, me pushing forward to get back on track a week or so. Occasionally I'll sleep. I did that once last month and I recall it vividly. Hope that answers it. Speaking of lead times from the previous question, hey, I finally got two questions in order. Is there a way to get a MassCon item any sooner? Yes, I would say three good ways. Number one, auctions. One other reason for my lead time scheduling is to allow for the occasional instant availability of some stuff. 
three or four times a year, I'll make an extra item and auction it off on the Facebook page. I always announce it in advance on my Instagram and Facebook pages, along with some world-class photos. Remember me discussing that earlier? Photos, photos, photos. Number two, the secondhand market. I've seen some of my stuff pop up for sale on some Facebook leather groups, so check there. Number three, bribe a friend, and that's self-explanatory. Holy sh! I need a f break. Why leather and not some other material to use in making stuff? Well, I make masonry stuff like houses and wood stuff, but it's not what people want to see. <laughs> I mean, the wife, Lily, makes paintings. One son, Mason, makes blacksmithing stuff and tools. One son, Nick, makes wood stuff, lathe work, and tools. And me, I'll stick to leather for public consumption. Next. What advice would you give a beginner getting into leather? That is its own designated video topic, honestly. But if you want more on that, ask in the comments. For now, I'd say patience, learn, practice, research, accept all advice, practice again, play around with crazy ideas, practice, have fun, do it for the joy, it will flow like water. A uh, little Bruce Lee reference. Do you ever do raw veg tan designing? Examples, swivel knife designs, tooling, dyeing, etc. I have, yes, it's been a long time and I never did it enough, remember practice, practice, to get perfected up to my own standards. Note, I am not a fan of the old fashioned leather tooling, the Western cowboy, filigree, acorns, oak leaves. To me, that just feels like copy and paste, and I had enough office life. So everything I ever did was, I guess, untraditional. Funny tidbit, my very first Instagram post from 2014 was, hmm, tooling and veg tan. Do you ever dye leather? Why don't or do you? Uh, first part, yes, I have and do. Second part, why or why not? You don't need to dye Horween, Dublin, Cromexel, Derby, Cavalier, and etc. The tannery, Horween or whomever, has already taken care of that for you. You should only dye straight veg tan leathers. And look where we are. We made it. Ah, uh, edge is good enough to lick. Um, get ready for some screenshots, screen grabs. I'm not going to hang around on these pictures long. The question I've gotten thousands of times, and the different ways it's been asked have been sometimes humorous. I'll read one. I went to the leather store and asked them for some of that proprietary goo. The guy laughed and said, ha, yeah, I love mask on videos too. And then he tried to sell me some blinker fluid for my car. What a chaotic mess, right? Well, this is representing over 10 years of edge finish research, hide back or flesh side testing, trial and error, as well as some homemade, possibly dangerous concoctions. All in the quest for mirror finish edges and slick hide rears. I've mixed different ratios of everything you can imagine to create a blend that's absolutely perfect to my standards. I've succeeded a few times, but there was a dilemma. One simple dilemma, beyond the years of being Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, it came down to quantity. I use a lot every day. You've seen a lot of my videos. I pour it on like it's free water and it ain't free. Um, well, wait a second. Those don't count. Every hide I use, I glob the rear with the sauce, slick and burnish it with the Berry King glass slicker. Again, see my other videos for demos. It's gallons. Well, my final perfect result was nearly identical to Tokonoli. Yes, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but we'll just stick with Tokonoli. Yes, perfect, just like Tokonoli is. Back to that dilemma. After doing a cost analysis, as you know I do with everything, believe it or not, it's more economical to let Siwa, or however you pronounce their name, do the behind the scenes work. As you can see, uh, I, I go through a lot of it, a lot. This is not even all I've, I've, mm, this is not all of them. I toss a lot of And there you have it. I've suffered years of toxic alchemy and botched witchcraft, so you don't need to bother. My gift to you. You're welcome. If you like what you see me do, my results, now you have the shortcut. Yeah, it's cheating, but we'll give you a pass this time. Now go craft 
and have fun. You should only die straight veg. Some advice for darkening, dark marketing, not darkening. What the? F really? Seriously? All in the quest for mirror finish edges.